I want to tell you about a disease that has been skyrocketing over recent decades. It is a pandemic, a global epidemic. According to the World Health Organization, it is the most common chronic disease of childhood, affecting 60 to 90 percent of children, far more than any other disease. What is it? It's tooth decay. You may wonder, how bad can that be? Well, if you've had good nutrition, you drink fluoridated water, you brush and floss daily, and you get regular dental care, you may not have suffered from tooth decay. But I will tell you about the children who are suffering, and I'll show you their photos, which may be painful to see. You'll learn how widespread and severe tooth decay is how it can affect children's overall health, what causes it, and what we need to do to prevent it. First, a disclaimer. I'm not a dentist. I'm a medical doctor with training in pediatrics and public health. But I've witnessed this pandemic firsthand, and I've had to learn about oral health so that I could help address what I now believe is the greatest threat to children's health around the world. 35 years ago, I was a Peace Corps volunteer in a town in rural Ecuador. Although there were many diseases, the children had healthy teeth. They ate straight from the farm, whole grains, fresh fruit, vegetables, milk, eggs, and meat. They only rarely had candy or soda. But 20 years later, when I returned to work in Latin America, this is what I saw. I was shocked. The mothers told me, my children's teeth are rotten. They complain of pain all the time. They can't eat. They can't sleep. They can't play. They can't concentrate in school. What is causing this? The grandmothers explained, the young people have moved away from our traditional foods. Now they just eat sweets. The old market sold fresh fruits and vegetables. The new market sold the modern processed snack foods and drinks. Worldwide, health experts have raised the alarm that children's increased consumption of junk food is driving pandemics of obesity, of type 2 diabetes, and cardiovascular disease. But the resulting pandemic of tooth decay has been tragically neglected. Numerous studies have shown that frequent consumption of sweets and carbohydrates in food and drinks causes tooth decay, and the global increase in the consumption of junk food is driving the pandemic of tooth decay. In response, over the past 10 years, we've harnessed the passion and volunteerism of over 100 students and health professionals to start the Children's Oral Health and Nutrition Project, a collaboration among university, nonprofit, and governmental partners in El Salvador, Ecuador, Peru, Vietnam, Nepal, and India. This is what we've seen. Junk food is everywhere, even in the remote villages, and the children's beautiful smiles are being devastated. This is starting within the first few years of life. Many parents are giving their babies candy and chips and soda in the baby bottle. By one to two years of age, many children already have tooth decay. By three to four, many are suffering from mouth pain. And by five to six, most have tooth decay and mouth pain. As parents, we all want what's best for our children. Many parents have told me that they grew up poor, and now when they have a little extra money, they want to buy treats for their children. And the snack food treats are cheap, often cheaper than healthy food. And where the water supply is contaminated, soda is often sold cheaper than bottled water. Plus, 
The snack food ads say they're healthy for children. They make your children taller, stronger, sharper, think better. They're good fun and they open happiness. So, with the very low price and the very seductive ads, are parents who are poor and uneducated tricked into buying these treats for their children? And what happens when a once in a while treat becomes an everyday staple of the diet? Many parents have told me that when they give their children small sweet snacks all day, the children stop eating real food. But children need real food to grow. When children are given junk food instead of real food, it causes severe tooth decay and malnutrition. This is a five-year-old child from Latin America whose family owned the town store. He had a continual supply of junk food. All of his teeth were decayed. He had mouth pain. He had difficulty eating, which compounded the cycle of malnutrition. And at five years of age, he was the size of a two-year-old. He was not ready to learn in school. Clearly, our children with tooth decay need dental treatment. But now that we have so many children with so many decayed teeth, we don't have enough dentists to treat them all. And our children should not have to suffer from mouth pain. In fact, tooth decay is entirely preventable, and the only way to stop this pandemic is through prevention. Is this possible in the developing world? Yes. Our project, now in six countries, is providing prevention services from birth, education on nutrition and oral health for health workers, parents, and children, toothbrushes and fluoride toothpaste for all family members, fluoride varnish applied to children's teeth two to three times per year, and referrals to dental care for children with tooth decay. And prevention is inexpensive. The supplies cost less than $5 per child per year. That's less than the families tell us they spend each month on junk food. And it's a lot less than the cost of dental treatment. In fact, preventing even one cavity per child per year saves money. So as you see, we're working at the grassroots level with health workers and families from community to community and we're seeing improvements in mother's knowledge and practices and improvements in children's oral health and nutrition. But we can only reach a small fraction of the children in need. To stop this pandemic, we need to address the causes. We need you to urge politicians and business leaders to make high-level policy changes, to ensure truth in advertising, to limit children's access to cheap, unhealthy food, and to increase access to affordable, healthy food and clean water. So for now, we'll celebrate our successes. Here are some of our thousands of participating children who are cavity-free, well-nourished, and smiling. I want to leave you with a statement from a Salvadoran mother whose children participated in our program from birth. She said, We used to think there was nothing we could do about our children's rotten teeth and mouth pain. It was just a fact of life here. But now, childhood doesn't have to be a time of pain and malnutrition. It can be a time of good health and happiness. This is what I believe all children in the world deserve. I believe it is possible and we must work toward this goal. If we don't act now, we'll have a future where children do not have teeth and cannot smile. We must give our children back their smiles and good health. Thank you.